The culture of microorganisms from blood is critical in the laboratory diagnosis of bacteremia and fungemia. In order to manage patients with many infective conditions, associated with a clinical presentation of pyrexia of unknown origin. Blood culture plays an integral role in the evaluation of sepsis and it is therefore essential that the blood culture procedure is carried out in a timely manner using an aseptic non-touch technique, ANTT, to avoid contamination of the specimen and to carry out two separate stab tests, one after the other. Blood cultures should only be carried out by staff members properly trained in the procedure and whose competence in blood culture collection has been validated. Microorganisms are present on the skin surface of patients, staff and the immediate patient environment and could easily contaminate specimens. Coagulase negative staphylococci are the commonest blood culture skin contaminant and therefore proper cleaning of the skin is a vital component of venesection and aids in the prevention of false positive results. These results can cause confusion due to the difficulty in determining if a positive blood culture is due to a genuine pathogen or due to contamination of the specimen. Contaminated blood cultures may compromise patient care by prolonging their hospital stay and exposing them to unnecessary antibiotic therapy. It also leads to needless engagement of clinicians, laboratory and microbiologists' time and unnecessary repeated cultures. Although it has been recommended that the target rates for blood culture contamination should not exceed 3%, the contamination rate for many institutions actually exceeds 7%, with up to 50% of positive blood cultures being false positives. A study carried out in Antrim from 2007 to 2008 found that 4.7% of blood cultures were contaminated and that false positive results added 1,372 hospital days and incurred detrimental additional hospital costs of £1.3 million per year. The Northern Health and Social Care Trust Blood Culture Policy for Adults adheres to the Department of Health Summary of Best Practice 2007 and must be followed at all times. Staff will only take blood cultures if there is a clinical suspicion of the presence of infection and not as routine when they are competent and trained and they can maintain asepsis throughout the procedure. You must ensure that you are compliant with the full policy document. With clean hands, clean the trolley or procedure tray with a trust-approved disinfectant and assemble the equipment you will require. Alcohol hand sanitizer and a sharps box. Two sets of sterile gloves. An apron. You will also require two sterile blood culture procedure kits. Each of these kits will contain a 21 gauge butterfly vacutainer system, a tourniquet, an adhesive dressing, a wool ball, a sterile drape a waste bag and adhesive strip and a chloroprep to decontaminate the patient's skin. Finally, you will need two 2% 2 chlorhexidine and 70% alcohol wipes to decontaminate the tops of blood culture bottles, two blue top aerobic inoculate bottles and two gold top anaerobic inoculate bottles, each to collect 8 to 10 millilitres of blood. Specific fungal blood culture bottles are available from the laboratory on request for culture of specific fungal pathogens. And two blood culture laboratory request forms, one for each set of samples. When you have assembled the required equipment, it is important at this stage to ensure you complete the forms fully and that the patient history is relevant. 
This must include recent or current antibiotic use, as this information aids the study of the blood samples by the microbiologist. Place the patient's details vertically on bottles, ensuring that the barcode label is not removed or covered. Hi, Stuart. Explain the procedure to your patient, particularly the importance of a non-contaminated sample. Wash your hands using the seven-step technique and put on a plastic apron. Inspect the site that you intend to use for venipuncture. Ensure that it looks clean and wash first with soap and water if in doubt. Sanitize your hands and clean the tops of the bottles with the 2% chlorhexidine and 70% alcohol wipes using aseptic non-touch technique and leave to air dry. Open the sterile blood culture procedure kit and remove the waste bag from it. Attach this to the side of the trolley with the adhesive strip, taking care that you do not contaminate the critical aseptic field. Place the blue disposable towel underneath the patient's arm and apply the tourner strip single-use tourniquet. Peel the removable section to expose the adhesive panel. Pass the slimmer end through the hole in the wider end and holding the tab on the wider end, tension by pulling the slimmer end in the opposite direction. Secure by bringing the under surface down onto the adhesive strip. Open the sterile gloves onto the critical aseptic field and then once again decontaminate your hands with 70% alcohol hand sanitizer. Put on the sterile gloves and clean the puncture site using chloroprep. To use chloroprep, pinch the wings on the applicator until you hear a click. This will release the solution. Allow time for it to soak into the sponge. Using back and forward and right to left movements, clean the chosen skin site for 30 seconds and then allow the site to dry for a further 30 seconds. Ensure the site is dry before proceeding. If necessary, the venipuncture site may be palpated again at this stage. The winged blood collection method is the trust's preferred method for blood sampling. This lessens the risk of contamination of the sample and needle stick injury. The use of the vacutainer in conjunction with correct skin and bottle top cleansing are key elements in procedural contamination risk reduction. Using an aseptic non-touch technique, puncture the vein and collect the blood sample, starting with a blue top aerobic bottle, followed by the gold top anaerobic bottle. Depositing of the blood into the correct sampling bottle is a key part of this procedure. Each bottle needs 8 to 10 milliliters of blood. The more blood, the better chance there is of identifying the causative organism. Smaller volumes, such as less than 5 milliliters, significantly reduce the chance of bacterial growth. Once the blood has been deposited into the inoculate, Swirl the bottle gently to mix the contents. Release the tourniquet and remove the needle by retracting the needle into the safety device. Then discard the collection set into the sharps container at the point of use. Apply the sterile dressing to the puncture site. Now clear away the trolley, correctly disposing of the equipment used, particularly the sharps. Clean the trolley according to local policy.
thoroughly wash your hands, following all seven steps of the effective hand washing technique. Set up the trolley again, as it is imperative that this procedure is completed with two separate stabs and two complete blood sample sets. Once the second sample has been collected, the filled culture bottles and completed forms now need to be sent immediately to the laboratory to permit early detection of bacterial growth. Finally, the procedure label needs to be fully and correctly completed and attached to the patient's notes. If you're ever in any doubt about an element of this procedure, remember to refer to the full policy document and that a clinical microbiologist service is available.